Hello, and welcome back to the We Bombastic Few podcast, formerly known as The Bombastic Podcast, uh, very formerly. Season 4, episode 2, total episode, I don't know, I haven't I just did the math the other day, I'm pretty sure it's episode 40 overall. 40, wow. Wow. Yeah, I was... I was telling someone about the podcast. They were like, how many episodes have you done? I was like, I don't know, like 40-ish. <laughs> so that was a pretty good estimate. Wow. That, yeah, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> anyway, Checks out. The voice you're hearing right now can introduce himself. Uh, that's me. I'm The Voice, yeah. also known as the voice from that hit tv show the, the voice, voice. <laughs> american idol this is this is simon cowell is simon cowell on the voice when are we having simon cowell on the podcast i don't know who simon cowell is this is uh... i am simon cowell he's the he's american idol guy mean one quit american idol i know there's the america's got talent got a judge that's named simon is that him yeah i think it's the same guy is okay. it yeah he might do i don't know he judges people <laughs> that's what he does and that's me also known as brent and but i know that and i am Lindsay, and i came prepared with the uh what the we bombastic few stands for are oh you, yeah are you ready for it Ooh, okay good it's it's very maybe par so don't C- don't have sh- should, should we take guesses i have exponentially high hopes oh okay okay so wombats exponentially broom other mom bats as (laughs) skeptically tick as skeptical ticks itch corresponding fragrances except wednesdays you got one word correct but not the correct <laughs> position uh, okay, yeah. i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> daniel okay. go okay um whatever breaks or may break a son's trust isolating character for every one. All right. <laughs> you, I'm pretty sure you got zero. You correct. missed the E, too. Like, okay. you didn't get whatever. one of the first E. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, yeah. Separate. Yeah. Weak elves bore our minds by acting strangely towards insulin capable flying exotic wombats. Oh my, wow. I got Wombat? Yeah. <laughs> that was the one I got? <laughs> Dang. I guess that is the only, is that the only repeated letter? No, I guess there's E. Yeah. Also, uh, a fun uh, fun trivia for you big wee bombastic few fans out there. Uh, last episode was an acronym. If you read the description, you can find out what that acronym is. Yeah. So, do that. Fun fact. It was uh, pre- Milked. 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 Yeah, I was like, I, I, I was gonna, I kept wanting to say the fir- the M, and I was like, that, that's not, we didn't have that long of a thing. Anyways, um, I was talking to my friend, my roommate, uh, the other day. What, you're He's not really, with your roommate? Uh, I mean, I'm friends with my roommate. It's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blink twice if he's listening over your shoulder right now message received (laughs) (laughs) confirmed okay so he's telling me about crosswords he's really into crosswords and he's telling me about times crosswords and he was saying yeah i'm working on like a time style crossword i'm going to submit it to them i was like oh is it good like "Eh, it's a work in progress i think i saw it when he was like a quarter of the way done or something but then he was telling me that apparently like every or at least nearly every crossword in the new york times crossword is just user submitted they don't make that's them. crazy that makes so much sense because it's like who the heck was hired to come up with a new puzzle every time no, it's just it's just puzzle nerds but what i feel like 
a, so like Sudoku, right? You can make a computer make one super easy, right? Mm-hmm. Where, but like crossword doesn't feel like it would be that much harder to have a computer. Well, I guess hints are you could have the computer come up with like the layout of the words mm-hmm. easily, but coming up with hints would be hard. Yeah, especially like time style, just like having every row and column line up to actually have something that means something fairly common knowledge. Or at least yeah. within a certain category. Yeah. yeah. And then usually they have a theme and you like can figure out the theme which helps you find out other stuff. And so, hmm. yeah. No, I just thought that All was right. interesting. Cause I, I, I just always pictured it was just like a, a team at New York Times who just made crosswords. There's an entire department that only does crosswords. They've got seven people and... Each one gets a different day of the week. <laughs> Dang. I would hate to work in that department. You have one week to come up with a crossword every single week. <laughs> but, which is funny, because that's kind of how the podcast works with segments. Each of us getting our own segment. Speaking of segments, today's are movie trivia. A hypothetical. That was, that was magical. That was absolutely magical, your transition. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, except you interrupted it. I, like, I was going to comment on it. Spot. Look, you got to ruin the magic a little bit. It wouldn't be a transition on our podcast if someone didn't mention how what are today's good segments, or bad Daniel? the transition was. Yep. <laughs> Checks out. You want to talk about the transition a little more, Brent? Because you, you kind of seem like you do. I don't. Oh, <laughs> okay. Read off the things. No, my bad. That, that was a bad read on my part. You should have blinked twice. <laughs> hypothetical, because what is a podcast without a hypothetical? And national holiday observance, which brings us to the can bombastic word. Can we talk about? Hold on, let's take a step back here for a second, real quick. Let Let's have the listeners acknowledge that they've received four new segments in the first two episodes. Wow, hot dang! The you guys are blessed. What, what were the? What was the second? We did. I I'm nervous. I I'm pretty sure it was new because <laughs> it was acronyms and then oh yeah talent thing. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, new let's segments. go. Look at these brand new topics. Segment. Yeah. New year, new podcast. <laughs> That's right. So what? What are we changing the name of the podcast? We we bombastic. Well, did, well hold on. Say that I have a joke. Few, say the few, say the bombastic word. word. Uh, <laughs> the bombastic word is argle bargle, which is copious but meaningless talk or writing. Hey, that sounds like bombastic. Maybe we should be we argle bargle few. That was my joke. Classic. With that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, what? we're <laughs> one. <laughs> no. Enough argle bargle about the bombastic word. <laughs> that that was my that was that was mine. Lindsay, do you have, do you have a <laughs> you, you, you have a quick plug now? of the bombastic yeah. word? <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> Wait, you you didn't have one prepared beforehand. <laughs> no, I do have to say though. I was like, did you delete my bombastic word of the episode, Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I was going to help you out in this movie trivia scoring system, but I may take that back now. What? <laughs> I'm going to beat Brent in the movie trivia. I don't need help. I, I Okay, am, okay, I fine. I am trivia. Okay, fine. Uh, dude, I feel I kind of want to lay down some, like, backstory <laughs> credentials in order for the, the podcast. You don't need to. You just, you just want a reason to flex, but if you feel like that is necessary, you no, may fine. really quick. <laughs> fine. We don't need to. Okay. We're movie on trivia time. Equal you, you, you just really cut his legs out from under him there, Lindsay. <laughs> All right. I will keep be keeping track so you guys don't have to worry about it. Of score, scoring. I was going to have it be uh, Daniel gets three points for everyone, right? And Brent gets two. But if he wants it even, we're just going to do one point each. Um, yeah, I'll beat him anyways. Okay. Two things. Is it, it, wait, so is it buzzer or is it like take turns? No, we're going to take What's turns. That? But we're okay. going to find out who goes first by, I'm going to say when the first one to fully say the answer gets to go first. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's like and, Family Feud. 
Yeah, sure. And then, however, uh, or along with that, I should say, the winner gets to pick the actors that play us when a movie about Wee Bombastic Few gets made. Ooh. ooh. I okay, already okay. know who's <laughs> playing me. And it could be... <laughs> yeah, I feel like I feel like you have to try at least try to be accurate. You could be comedic to some extent, but I think you have to try to be somewhat accurate. Spoiler uh, alert: It's Will Smith. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I look just like Will Smith in real life, by the way. If any, like the you know the whole is like you got up. doppelganger. <laughs> like Will Smith is my doppelganger. Okay. Anyone so, who knows Brent in real life will tell you. To some extent, these get a little more difficult as they go on, but not like in any consistent manner, um, kind of all over the place. So I'm just going to leave them all at the same point system, one each. The first one is to decide who goes first is, what is the kid's name that has left Home Alone and Home Alone? Kevin. Uh, uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was looking we, for the full name, it, right? but Ooh. yes, I'll take Kevin. Oh, uh, McAllister. Kevin McAllister. Okay, Daniel said the entire thing first, so I guess <laughs> technically. <laughs> no, that's fair. Okay, Daniel. If it's character names, though, this is going to be tough. No, no, no. Yeah. No, no, no. They're not all like that. They're all like a various like movie facts okay, uh, okay, yeah. in the movie, movie facts outside the movie, uh, like history-wise. Like it's It ranges a lot. Okay, first one is a quote, though. Uh, name the movie for this tagline. For Harry and Lloyd... Every day is a no-brainer. For Harry and Lloyd, every day is a no-brainer. Wait, what am I guessing? What am I saying? What the movie is from. Oh, what movie it's from? Yeah, Uh, Harry and Lloyd. Does he have a time limit? Is that your guess? Yeah, yeah, the movie's name is Harry and Lloyd. Okay, (laughs) Brent, go. Okay, I was confident, but now I'm a lot less Wayne's World. It's... No, it's Dumb and Dumber. Dumb and <laughs> Harry and Lloyd. I haven't the names. seen that one in a long time. Shoot. Yeah. Okay, I'm not okay. claiming that I know all these. I knew all these answers before I found them. I will <laughs> no, say that, fine. by that's the fine. way. Right. Uh, okay, zero points across yep. the board. Okay, highest gross uh, animated film. Highest gross animated film. Yeah. Ooh. Okay, the I'm I'm not submitting answers yet, but like. I want to say it's like Lion King or something. Or, Fro- no, it's Frozen. It's Frozen. Yeah, but it's Frozen 2 more. Oh, gosh. I don't think Frozen 2 I will. S- I got these questions and answers from different sources, and most of them were, like, within the past, like, were made within the past year or so. I will say that for the future. This That won't change anything for this one, but. Yeah, okay. That, <sighs> don't let that help you at all, but for future reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I think it might be Frozen 2. Or Okay, uh, uh, I'm just going with Frozen. Daniel? Oh, you're not going to tell him if he's right? He Wait, can we, can, well, we both, it's, can we it's both get a point on something? Presumably not correct. I guess, I guess we could, but no, let's just go how we did last episode. Yeah. Dan, uh, yeah so Daniel, Frozen go ahead. Incorrect. Cur- it is incorrect. Oh, okay. I was actually going to say Frozen. So, uh, Frozen 2. It was Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so that's adjusted for inflation, then. Potentially. I, I'd imagine. High, highest gross No, it's definitely adjusted like for DVD inflation. Shows. Okay. Or is it, like, in the box office? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was simply, the, state asked, the question was simply highest grossing animated film. Shoot. Okay. Mm. Brent, if you could give me your word that uh, you you considered inflation, I will give you half a point. <laughs> the, well, that's that's the thing is like I've looked at a list before and I know I knew Lion King was high and I knew Frozen was up there, but like I don't know if that list was adjusted for inflation. No point. I don't want a point. Okay. All right. Uh, it's Daniel's turn. What was the first James Bond movie? Oh come on, <laughs> baby! Please, please. The first James Bond. Can I get a bonus point for every movie I name in order? Of <laughs> no. James Bond. I think there's one potential extra credit point in here it, somewhere, but I'm not sure. It's gonna be. He has a time limit, right? I, I'm just trying to think of what the like. No, he's tagline could be. I don't trust Daniel to not Google things. You would hear me <laughs> typing. That's very true. <laughs> I mean, he actually, that's not true because you could pull out your phone. But oh, still, that's true. uh. Um, 
Uh, or I'm gonna be say using his neural link. 007. Nightfire? That's not a movie. <laughs> I'm I don't know. It's the name of one of the games. <laughs> well, okay. So, so would you like to know the first James Bond film ever, which was Dr. No with Sean Connery? Or would you like to know the first James Bond film according to each corresponding actor, which would be... Okay, for, Brent, you know, shut up. Brent gets one point. <laughs> <laughs> okay next one uh brent this one's real easy oh what color pill does neo choose to take within the original matrix well so the he chooses to take the red pill because the red pill takes him out of the matrix and the blue pill put would make him forget correct uh first animated movie ever released daniel uh can, can i like i'd like to steal <laughs> I would like to steal. Why did I get a question about the Matrix? <laughs> what was the Harry and Lloyd question? Like, I hate Dumb and Dumber. It's a stupid movie. I've seen, I've seen all the Dumb and Dumber movies, and I hate trivia. them all. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's names. Okay. It wasn't trivia. Um, that is trivia. It was a quote. Okay, hold on. What was the question? <laughs> uh, first animated Jump. movie ever re- released. Can we get the Jeopardy countdown timer? Animated. Oh my god. Do gosh. you have that on your soundboard, Daniel? So, uh, I might, but I don't have the soundboard pulled up. Curses. Uh, I'm trying to think of old ones. Let's. Like film or like Five, animated cartoon? Four. Wait, no, this is an important question. Three, is it film or cartoon? I said movie. Five, oh, four, uh, three, Willie, the movie. two. <laughs> what did you no, say? That was, uh, Aunt, he said Steamboat Willie. Oh, the um, movie. So Snow Snow White and the Seven Troll. The Snow White. I think it's just called Snow White. But there's the yes. the first animation ever was um, a dinosaur. It Shoot. no, it wasn't a dinosaur. It was so it's a French animation. It's from like the late 1800s, and it um, you can find it on YouTube. Um, but like, it's, it's lit, it's like, it's people, but like, they, they just turn into wacky things. It's a See, wacky, it's, it's an, it's like a trip. I Check it out. almost said Snow White and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's like the fifties and I'm sure they made something earlier than that. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. I don't know when Snow White came out. As much Which, as I would love I guess to. I'm not pretty sure they made something for that. I was just, I was like. Surely they made an animated film before, like, the 50s. But I also don't know when Snow White released, because I just kind of thought. As much as I would love to he- continue hearing Brent flex that he knows all this stuff, let's move on. Because I want to get through 38. all this. 38. Uh, oh, 1938. Brent, it's your turn, right? Yep. Uh, what were the dying words of Charles Kane of Citizen Kane? Rosebud. Okay, point for Brent. Uh... But what does it mean? The answer. Okay, shut up. Shut up. Uh, Daniel, which social media app was the subject of the social network movie? Get out of here. That's not. You got the Matrix question. No. (laughs) You did get the Matrix question. What are you talking about? The Matrix question is a 50-50. The the (laughs) Facebook question is 100%. No, it's not. Someone who knows nothing about the Matrix could have. I said which. What Keller? I didn't say, did he take the red or blue pill? I said, what Keller? So it's not a Mm 50-50 shot. Mm. Oh no, Brent! Got, Brent didn't get the easy question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is gonna suck because it was a terminated question, and Brent's not gonna get it for the first guess. Okay, uh, in The Godfather, Walt found his prized animal's head on the bed. What type of animal Horsehead. was it? Okay, Are you it's kidding? Brent's Brent. Horsehead. Yes. Um, that's a. I, I was it was always said like how gross of a scene that is, but like honestly, it's not that gross. Okay. <laughs> uh, in Terminator, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger plays a cybernetic organism with living tissue over metal endoskeleton. Which model series was oh. he? So I'm... here. Here's the thing. I've never <laughs> seen Terminator. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna guess fake uh, movie fan. C-118. So, I'm pretty sure he's a T-700. Because, like, in the next... The the sequel movie, 
he fights like the newest model, right? And I'm pretty sure that one's like a T800. Um, <clears throat> My source. Uh, so, okay. Sorry, what? Is what? What's your final answer? The well, I am curious. Like, is, would this change my answer? What you're about to tell me, and can you tell me it? Uh, just answer the question. Okay. Um. Oh man, I'm. Uh, okay, T seven hundred. Ladies and gentlemen, he says his favorite movie is Terminator, but my source says it was T eight hundred. Oh, oh my god! No <laughs> way. The. Wow. Because, oh, first off, Terminator 2 Judgment Day is my favorite movie. So, oh, I meant like Terminator of. in general, whatever. Uh, okay. But is it T800? Because T, so that would mean that it's like T900 or T1000 that's in Terminator 2. Or, or they're both <sighs> T800 and you suck no, at they're movie not. trivia. The, because he's mol- made of molten metal in the second one. Dang. That's so sad. It's better than what you say, like C1. That's, that's like Rick and Morty, what Earth, uh, uh, <laughs> who is the Rick from. Okay, we've got like five or six more. Let's go. Uh, okay, let's, let's, let's lightning round it. Uh, finish the apocalypse, apocalypse Now quote. I love the smell of blank in the morning. Uh, I think it's you, maple. Brent. Dang it. I was like, what was Apocalypse Now about? <laughs> I was like, as soon as I got uh, Okay, okay. Have you seen Apocalypse Now? Okay, I'm, that yeah. was Brent's question. What? What? Oh my gosh, it oh, was. It was. <laughs> I, okay, well, I like, word of honor, it was, I 100% knew it was Napalm. Well, so I, <laughs> I couldn't tell if that noise you made was you holding yourself back from it. saying I, I, it I, I, or if it was you like frustrated that you didn't know it so no it was me getting annoyed that i did not have that question yeah i'm I, going i'm going to give like to both a point the news is dumb. <laughs> okay I get this one though no no you did not <laughs> why not <laughs> because it's an easy one and daniel needs it <laughs> This is so dumb. <laughs> Which platform does uh, one have to use to board the Hogwarts Express? Uh, nine and three quarters. Well done, Daniel. Actually would not have got that one because the only Harry Potter film I've seen is the last one. <laughs> yeah, okay, because you so that back. one was Brent's and I stole it, so give me the next one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. I'm going to keep going this way. Uh, Brent, in the final act of Inception... Uh, oh. And still within a dream, Robert Fisher, played by Cillian Murphy, opens his father's safe to find what childhood toy? Extra point if you could tell me both items, the, the additional item that was in the safe. Ah, it's absolutely. I've only seen Inception. What, I, I was hoping the question was, what's the main character's real totem or something? <laughs> um, this one uh, I didn't make up. Like I added the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. additional item. Uh, Daniel, do you have any idea? I I I think so. Would would I lose the point for getting the toy if I got the second item wrong? No. Okay. Mm, yeah. The. Mm, I will say it has the second item has some relation to the childhood toy. The, I don't know stuff there. Incorrect. Do you want to take any guesses on the second item? A second stuff there. <laughs> okay, Daniel. Um. Okay. I'm. I'm thinking I might be wrong here because that since Brent said it's their not their totems, I'm like, Ugh. but I'm gonna go with uh, top for the toy and ring for the second item. Incorrect. You're thinking about uh, the main character. The main character. This is. Uh, Silly Murphy didn't play the main character. He played pretty much the uh, the to be victim, fair. maybe. I think it's considered the victim in the movie. But it is a paper wheel and a picture of him and his father playing with the paper pin wheel. Uh, what was that? Sounds. I, I, I don't think I've seen that movie. That sounds uber vaguely familiar. In one sitting, I, I yeah. think I've I think I've seen most parts of that movie, and it was not at the same time. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to say one more. Uh, name of the young girl, uh, John Hammond's granddaughter in Jurassic Park. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> name of the... Uh, also, it, wait, wait, hold on, 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 hold on. I believe this is Daniel, so no... It doesn't in. matter. <laughs> it's the... I, it, it would have been hard for me to come up with the name Dr. Hammond. <laughs> I'm going to go with Tilly. Intriguing. Um, Incorrect. The, so, the, so the, like, the young one, right? The, like, the grandkid? Yes. Uh, can I describe every scene she has in the film? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, hide in cabinets from Velociraptor Girl. Lex Junior. Murphy. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, although Brent did win, he is not as big of a movie buff as he once thought. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's garbage <laughs> asking for names of characters in movies. That like, is not. I discard names of characters in movies so often. Just because you do doesn't mean, like, you should. Well, but there's a point, like, because I used to get, like, annoyed with people. It's like, why do you bother with actor names? Just use the names of the characters. And then I realized when you've seen, this, like, the same actor in 19 different films, like, remembering their name becomes incredibly tedious and pointless Mm -hmm. and you can just say like well brent six points daniel three daniel i try to help you with points but clearly you did not want that at the beginning i have it on uh recording Uh, i'll Uh, I'll cut it out in uh uh uh, brent come back next week with the actors i don't like that the prize is a homework assignment (laughs) it's just a fun little thing whatever you gave me something what are you talking about i know i know (laughs) um okay so it's actors for each of us yeah okay i'm writing it down or actresses whichever one or actresses Ooh, can we like we'll do the oceans eight version too it's like (laughs) sure the, the gender bender version sure that'd be fun all right well moving on then we've got our bombastic quote why do they call it air conditioning? You don't do it after air shampooing. And now that brings us to the hypothetical. All right, so here's the dealio. You might have noticed yesterday that the sun is no longer alone. We now have binary star system. There are two suns, Star Wars. You just you prob- you might have not noticed because like the other the new suns behind the old sun. And so it just looked like it was just the old sun. But here's the thing. The, in, like, gravity stopped working also. <laughs> and so the, the only way the stars knew how to, like, move around each other is through some uh, telepathy. But the thing is, is everyone knows that everything that the sun can do gets transferred to people on Earth. And so now, but the thing is, is, like, the sun chose to do it. They didn't have to do it. And so, so, so the now, hypothetical is everyone has the ability to solar flare anytime they yep. want. <laughs> so the hypothetical is you have the option to choose to be permanently telepathically connected to someone. And so the like the other person has to accept the offer. But so it's a it's like a consciousness sharing basically. You cannot have a thought that the other person does not hear and like vice versa. And so the, so, so like, does, uh, this have to be mutual? Yeah, I, it, it has to be consensual. Okay. Um, so the basically, so like, but you, you, so you do get to choose, right? Um, so and you can only do one person, and so the this this just happened today in today's world. So, what what's what's going on? <laughs> have you guys chose your person yet? And so I think the first question is like. How do you think people are going to... What criterion are people going to use to choose people? Um, I think some people will use it as, like, binding a marriage together. Which I feel... So, like, I feel like if you're already in a marriage, right, then, like, your spouse is going to guilt you (laughs) and is like, why would you not choose me for your telepathic (laughs) connection? It's like, well, fine. Um, But I think that... I feel like that's... It's like suddenly dating and just like in general takes it up to a whole new level because like not only are you stuck with this person for life you're stuck with the, like their inner thoughts for life 
Hmm. So wait, it, do you, do you think, like, and, let's say you're, you're telepathic, you're you're telepathically connected to someone, and you're trying to sleep, and you know you've kind of cleared your head, but they're having trouble sleeping, and everything they're thinking is just streaming into your head, so you can't sleep either. Well, yeah, I th- I think you would just get really good at just ignoring your own thoughts if that's possible. Maybe, because. Hmm. What the, this is kind of, this was, I was going to say this for future, but I do kind of have a quick, I feel like at some point, like you, you your separation, you, your like self identity would break down. Like you no longer think of yourself as a individual person. Cause like, I'm going to like, who's to say that like the thoughts sound differently or something like, are, are you even aware that their thoughts are not your own thoughts? So, so wait, 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 that you... is an interesting point. But I'm, I, I kind of want to say for the sake of, like, having everyone not go mentally insane, that, like, you are able to keep your sense of self. <laughs> well, and you it, know whose thoughts are whose. Uh, I was going to say, you, you have the ability to, like, choose to be, like, you can't, like, telepathically connect to anyone else but that person. But, like, I don't know. You think it should stay permanent, like, everything goes both ways or like you can turn it yeah. on and off okay no if you could turn it on and off then i think it becomes entirely different um also that like i will say it will create a lot of argle bargle between the two of you so can you keep record like can you access the records of it so like say because like i'm starting to think you mean? so like i'm starting to think like what if i had a business uh, competitor or like someone I know just absolutely wants to oppose me like what if like we had these like budding heads type of mindset to towards one another I feel like that would be the person you want to do that way you can never be what's the word like I feel like that would put a lot of things into perspective one and two I could be like you would know so like say say main creative mind at Apple does it with main creative guy at Samsung. Like they're always building off of each other's ideas and growing so much more rapidly because they've got the competitive, they agreed to it. So like they can like use that to encourage each other. But like say like your mob head of a mob family and you're connected to another and you're, yeah, something like that. And you like, there's a thought of that's threatening to the other person you're connecting to. Like, can you like present that as evidence? Like there is a record of it. Like you could access it and show like no, this, or is it just like no way. only the two people that are connected can know about what's going on? Yeah. Like you can't admit, Aside, like admit your own current thoughts. And so like okay. now the difference is just, you're hearing theirs as okay. well. I do. So, but I do really like the idea. Like I, I, uh, I'll go into my ideas of like who you should pick in a second, but I do like, just the general thought of picking someone very different from you such that like you get both sides of a coin and stuff. Mm-hmm, exactly. But also I'd be curious, you brought up an interesting idea. Like what if like the company Apple was like, Hey, you can't work here anymore because we know you're connected to the guy of that Samsung. Yeah. Extra like, background like, check stuff. What if, yeah, well just like, so let's say, let's say you're connected to another person, right? And like, you guys cannot work in the same field unless you're like, if you're in different companies, because it's like, Hey, like we can't, like I work at Dr. Pepper, you work at Coca-Cola. Like we can't have you guys sharing knowledge or whatever. Yeah. That'd be interesting. I don't know. I like, think I think like how I presented it, there's potential that some people would see it as like, oh, like media wise, we're going to act like we're all time rivals, but we're just like friendly competitors. So if we did share, have like some mind link of the creative side, then we could both grow rapidly as a company potentially. Mm-hmm. My, so my initial, I have two thought, two ideas in terms of like who I would choose. Right. First thought is I want, I would want someone who just like has a lot of experience and knowledge in a field that I have none in. Right. So like, uh, for example, like Christian, the friend of the podcast, he's an expert in like a thousand different fields. Right. Um, but so the, the, or let's just take one of his fields, right? Like chemistry. Like I don't, I didn't go past chemistry, like chem one. 
uh, Gen Chem one. And so having just, you basically gain an entire working knowledge of a field if you pick the right person. Whereas like if I were to choose an electrical engineer, then well, like there's so much overlap of our knowledge or even just an engineer in general. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it works. I don't think you can access and pick the brain of your. Well, like, well, see, like, but I, like can, say... I can think to my, I can think to the other person and be like, Hey, what's the formula? What's the ideal gas? Law? Yeah. The, the like, current PV thought equals NRT. The, the current thought could literally be like, Oh, I wonder what this is. And like the other person would well, receive and be I mean, like, you can, you Oh, can I literally know. ask them. Yeah. You know how yeah. Many yeah. People are going to get screwed over because they give themselves telepathic connections to someone in high school so they can cheat on a test. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, okay. That's my second idea is you, you, telepathically connect to like a quote-unquote guy in the chair right where the, all they ever do is sit at their computer and they're just like they're your uh they're your oracle or your like felicity smoke or insert uh like superhero sidekick here that just sits at the computer and it's like oh i wonder what this is and they're just always at a computer and they google it for you yeah what happens if the other person dies yeah i was gonna ask the same thing uh so I'm going to kind of steal something from, I don't know. Will I we, will we learn what the, like, the, like, feeling of death is like, everyone? Because, like, if, if or mo more people. <laughs> I don't know if I want to explore that. But the, it is, so, like, I would, I would say, like, you get to choose again. But suddenly, it's, it's not, like, permanently. It's for life. And so, you, like, if you want a new person, you just need to kill your other. But how are you going to kill your other person if they know every thought you have? Yeah, exactly. Man, this is a good movie. I called it, though. It's mine. <laughs> okay, you so. Have it. Yeah, because, like, then you could, like, you could choose the route of, like, a mentorship. So it'd be, like. Uh, a grandpa would be like, oh, my grandson just was born. I'm going to, like, link minds with uh, my grandson or granddaughter. And then, like, I can, like, uh, relay, like, wisdom and, like, uh, knowledge and whatever needed. And then when they get older, uh, when the grandpa passed away, they can choose someone younger and, like, continuously, hmm. like. Uh, I kind of like that, though, like, just generational knowledge of. Yeah that's kind of cool just like the mentorship side of it although like i feel like if i'm like i would never want to choose someone like right now i would not choose someone younger than me for like any purpose i mean right? any kind of mentorship is going to be semi-selfless right well but it's very different when like for i'd be willing to mentor someone younger than me right now but i'm not willing to shit like like i don't think i'd gain enough to like make it worth like permanently like i only get one telepathic link i'm not giving it to like a 12 year old who plays Fortnite every night <laughs> okay uh so I, I i think so there, there are some problems that arise from having a connection with someone uh take for instance like right now no telepathic connection and um you know you could be talking to a friend especially like during the pandemic when you know things get released directly to like disney plus and stuff and they've watched it before you and you'll get spoiled on stuff and so think yeah. about how awful it would be if you were telepathically oh connected goodness, to absolutely. someone and they watched the movie without you and now like i mean you you hear everything they thought during that movie so that's like mega spoilers and so streaming services are gonna like lose a lot of capital a lot of share which will leave some room in the industry for a new form of media to arise. One that lets people share in a viewing experience together locally um, with not nearly as easy access to do it on your own. And that's why Blockbuster will be coming back in this hypothetical world. You know, the Honestly, second makes sense. the second that it started getting quiet, I knew that's what you're going for, and I am <laughs> proud of how you did that. I was, I, I was like, "Is this? Is it? Is, <laughs> yep, yep." Okay, no, but I actually did think about for sports, right? Let's oh, say, uh, let's think say the same thing. You're, the same thing. Go ahead. Let's say you're on a football team, and like your quarterback's connected to your running back or something, right? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if like perfect communication between certain pairs within your team? Well, like, okay. even think about it, like, bigger picture than that. Imagine you choose, like, a teammate uh, on your on your sports team, and then they get traded to a different team, and then, like, oh, you play against them. No, you couldn't. 
Yeah, like it would like trading becomes so much more complex. Yeah, I I think probably a really valuable one would be like um, whichever um, lineman is covering the quarterback's blind side and the quarterback it for football at least because then you know quarterback can't see what's happening on you know let's say they're right-handed so they're left side so if the left tackle gets uh misses his block then he could be like on your left and then the quarterback you know does the quarterback thing what he play football or something not a, a little bit <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit um but other sports, I'm trying to think if like this would come into water big play polo. Other, I don't know water how water polo, polo works. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell, tell us, tell us about water polo, Brent. So there, so I'm pretty sure it's like <laughs> handball in the water, right? Basically, there's nets and there's a ball, and you like throw the ball into. Is the Is that what water, water polo is? That'd be I'll, sick. I'll, maybe <laughs> that'd be sure. awesome. Um. I'm not going to look it up either. I'll, I'm willing to be stupid on the podcast. It's happened before. Be, be calm. Anyway. Is that what water polo is? Yes. It, oh, <laughs> yeah, ex- that's, that's exactly awesome. what water polo is. So there's two nets on either side, and you throw the ball back and forth uh, between the people, and they try and throw it in the net, and there are goalies and all that jazz. So, like, how be, high does a net come out of the out of the water for a goalie to be It's, like, it? three and a, a half feet. Inches? Uh, hot. No, no. <laughs> it's, yeah, I'd say, no. It's I'd say it's four and a half feet out of the water. Well, you know, Maybe. it's got, it's got to be something yeah. like reasonable no, yeah. for people to like jump out of the water in. But the only way to keep that consistent is if the goalies wear the net on their head. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be that's pretty fun. A game where like the goalie has the net on them and they're just running around the field. Ooh. That that'd be kind of interesting. Isn't but that also just like, very prone to injury? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that just dodgeable? Mm. Kind of, but like, so like, it changes. But there's still team. Take, take, mm. take <laughs> a game like handball or soccer or something, but yeah, the goalie can actually participate in the offense and stuff and run around the field. <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah, but that, the goal stays on them. So wouldn't you need a three dimensional? Like oh, or three, it, it, sorry, three. Sure we, it, 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 pretty sure we live gym. in. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, like the frame of the goal is typically two dimensional, right? Like it's a two dimensional box or whatever. But like in theory, you would need something you could hit from any any angle, right? Because you, then the goalie could just turn to its side and you wouldn't be able to hit it, right? Well, I imagine it'd be like a pole or something, and then it like lights up if it's hit period that's that's right. yeah i was almost thinking like a like a pole comes out of the helmet and there's a ring on top you gotta throw it through the ring and then there's two yeah. sides it could be on and you or just gotta and have what really if the what if the game. ring's just rotating at all times <laughs> and then what if people have lacrosse sticks <laughs> yeah and what if they're riding horses in the water in the water <laughs> water horses seahorses yeah everyone's <laughs> riding giant seahorses and the goalies are on canoes <laughs> on their seahorses the the canoes are filled with water <laughs> i call it so that's i think that's basically what would happen if the telepathy just uh went out yeah, yeah that, that would be the number one broadcasted sport on television i think it could be right now so uh let's make that happen <laughs> but uh, as far as conventional sports go i don't i like it feels like football is probably the most applicable. Yeah, probably. Ye- I mean, behind water polo, sure. <laughs> Maybe, like, potentially combat sports. Like, let's say you have a boxer. I mean, ooh, and, like, warfare. They're, they're in the zone, so it's, like, hard to, like, hear what your coach is saying. And your coach could just be like, hey, he keeps dodging this way. Try and catch him on it. I don't know. You said warfare, though? Yeah, like, I, the, so, like, squadrons of soldiers, right? And, like, your soldiers are, um, like, telepathically connected. I don't know how, like, or specifically, let's say, like, a sniper and a spotter, right? That'd be pretty good. A sniper and their target. 
<laughs> that is, I'm, that I'm is about truly, to move three feet to the left. <laughs> that is truly the ideal connection right there. For one of them. Like, imagine they both had this thought at the same time. Like, the, the target knows to just sniper somewhere. They're like, what if I was telepathically connected to the sniper? And the sniper goes, what if I was telepathically connected to my target? And then that's just good enough that they had that thought at the same time. <laughs> Uh, I, we kind of we kind of move past it, but honestly, I think the the biggest meat here would be like would be just the choosing, like yeah. I I don't think honestly I don't know if I would choose anyone. You gotta choose. Well, yeah. That I, I, honestly, I, that is a valid like. Are you willing to have your inner thought? I feel like the benefit like I I'd, it, I'd be not, willing to have all my inner thoughts just out there to one person, but just because of the benefits. I, I just feel like it would be annoying. It's, it's not so much like I, I don't care if someone else that you know I really trusted had all my inner thoughts, but like I, I wouldn't want all of their thoughts in my head. I do think it might be better in some ways if it was random over choosing. I feel like for me, that's <laughs> my hold back. Dude, I would rather it be random than like soulmates. have to choose someone. Your soul yeah, like, whoever you got connected to. <laughs> I mean, basically, yeah. It's really unfortunate if it, you're like 80 years old and they're like three months. Good oh. lord. Do you think. So, like, twin. Obviously, um, identical twins have telepathic connection already. So, do you think they have telepathic connection with other people and then they it, have it like. Translates. Four, they have like four people who can all. And then hear that, each other's thoughts? that. They are also twins. And so then, like. <laughs> You, they, twins only pick twins, and then every twin on Earth is connected. And then they can watch movies together on VHS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the same room. Yes. <laughs> From Blockbuster. Yeah, now, now that um, all sports are in swimming pools, the sports arenas are just for movie showings. Mm -hmm. Checks out. Oh. Pretty sure that's what would happen. So, uh, speaking of sending messages through the waves, I believe we have a message from, from our sponsors. Our sponsors. <clears throat> this week's sponsor is Fresh Air Homes. Are you tired of being stuck? Are you tired of being stuck inside all day long while you are working from home, or stuck at the same old nine to five at the office every day? Just to go home and take care of the fam and be stuck inside there for the rest of the evening. Constantly thinking, if only I could get some extra sunlight or fresh air. Well, fresh air homes have you covered. A fresh air home provides you with all the with provides you with all natural winds and exposure to the sun, so much so that you will start to question if there are any walls or roof to your home. Use cold code We Bombastic Roof at checkout to get ninety nine percent off your home. I mean, your fresh air home today. Wow, I've I've been using the fresh hair, the, the, the fresh, fresh hair. Fre, the fresh That's hair next week's home. sponsor. Sorry, <laughs> the fresh air home for about a week now, and it has changed the way I do work from home. Brent, what do you think now, about? I have fresh I mean, it, hair. It really just changes your life. There's nothing else that like you think you're happy right now. You're not. You're depressed. You're in a downward spiral. You know it. You just haven't told yourself. But uh, with Fresh Air Homes, you can change that around. <laughs> I'm not legally allowed to say that. but <laughs> Be Because as we all know, all, the, old, the cure to depression, the best kept secret in the world is go outside. Obviously, that's the solution that the world's <laughs> been missing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Basically. Don't forget to use your discount code. Mm -hmm. We worked hard on that one. And now, our final segment of the day, National Holiday Observance. Oh, wow. um, and before I get to the holiday, because we, we have this segment planned for the day on which uh, this episode will release, which will be January 30th. But I'd like to give a big shout out to a national holiday observed on January 27th when we're recording, which is Thomas Crapper Day. The description reads, where's the crapper? You've likely said or heard someone say, but did you know, did you know that you weren't just using a slang word for excrement? 
but we're actually mentioning someone's name? Although Thomas Crafter did not invent the toilet, that is usually credited to John Harrington in 1596, he did help perfect and popularize it. We celebrate him today on the anniversary of his death, which happened in 1910. So, shout outs thank, to thank Thomas you, Crapper. Thomas Crapper. Father of the modern toilet. <laughs> sure, you have the father of the modern medicine. You have the father of computing. No. Father of the modern the toilet. Ar the arguably thing. as as accomplished of an advancement in technology as many other things. Toil toilet's huge for hygiene. <laughs> it's very big, yes. It really is. But the holiday observed on January 30th, again, the day hopefully this releases. I don't, I don't even know why I said that. The day this will release. <laughs> you and are that, jinxing us right now. I really am. We're going to have all the technological difficulties. We're gonna have to re-record the episode. It's it's all over from here. Uh, editor, good news cut, is cut, I know this all out. the answers. <laughs> uh, Dumb and Dumber Two, Pinwheel, photo of Pinwheel with father, T eight hundred, Red Pill. I already got that one right. No, you didn't. Um, what's what's today's holiday? The today's and, holiday, which and by today I mean the thirtieth. Yeah, because today's the thirtieth, and not the for all they know that it is the thirtieth. Yeah, we recorded this today, the January thirtieth, because because that's today, and and today is National Inane Answering Message Day. What? What does that mean? If something is inane, it is silly or stupid. That's a bonus bombastic word for you, by the way. <laughs> According to Thomas and Ruth Roy, who created Inane Answering Message Day, the day takes place each year so that people can listen to what they have as their recorded greeting for their voicemail and home answering machines and replace any that are ridiculous and annoying, um, quote-unquote, that, quote, waste the time of anyone who must listen to them. Other holiday sites have taken the liberty to say that the day may also be for stopping the reception of inane messages. Although the messages may be difficult to prevent or for doing the exact opposite of the day's original intent, Changing greeting message messages so that they are inane. So if you want to observe National Inane Answering Message Day, you could either follow the creator's original intent to record a new answering message if yours is inane or silly, ridiculous, annoying, etc. Or if you would like to celebrate this in a more uh, refined and modern way, you will change your answering message to something completely ridiculous which long long term fans of the podcast will remember uh season two we re-recorded my voicemail that's uh episode just kidding uh hello just kidding you got my voicemail and uh today in celebration of the holiday we're gonna look at daniel's so daniel uh are you able to pull up your current one or do you even have one right now I do not have one right now, I believe. Oh, my goodness. Doesn't even have one. Also, as a side note, I will say, like, it is slightly insane the amount of, like, compliments and people who have told me that they, like, laugh every time they hear my voicemail uh, thing. Like, will, people Will you, will really you play, like uh, play your voicemail for us real fast? Uh, okay, call me and I won't pick up and put it on. Um. Wait, can't you just get to it from your phone app? Yeah, I'm just concerned that it might try and. Um, I'll call. Him. Like, I'm concerned it might uh, delete. Uh, basically, I'm calling okay. right now. Oh, you got it. Okay. Guess what? I'm not picking up. I'm pretty. Yeah. I don't yeah. Just press press the end call. You button. almost reached me, Brent. Try again later. At the tone. Did yeah. you catch all that? <laughs> you almost I, reached I, me. We, try again later. Yeah. Well, congratulations. You almost reached me, Brent. Call it. Try again later. It's pretty good. It's pretty dang good. Anyway, Dan. All right, brainstorm time. Daniel, what are you thinking? Um. Hmm. What am I thinking? I I, I think it it it's got to be big. It's got to be three minutes long. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't know how much longer we have for the episode. Maybe just the. What if? Okay. What if your voicemail? was the entire an entire episode of We Bombastic Field. 
Oh, now that's an idea. <laughs> so, hello. Oh, hello, and welcome to this episode of <laughs> No, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. Let's run with this. Let's run with this. What if it's literally, like, hello, and welcome to, and then, like, it doesn't have to be We Bombastic Few, but what if it's, you, you present it as if it's the start of a podcast? Hello, and welcome to my, my voicemail, season one, episode one. <laughs> Leave your name and number. And no, don't don't put we'll leave your name. No, have that's... you on a guest? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> oh man, I like this idea. Let's run with this. Uh, it's your voicemail. You can choose. But we're doing this. All right. We. we I, th- I think what we need is a script. Um, so I think the best way to do this is Lindsay comes up with the first word, you come up with the second word, I come up with the third word, and we'll go in a circle until we've got, like, uh, 45 words or so. How about, like, three sentences? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I'm starting it right here. Okay. So I'm starting? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Apparently we're on caps. No, we're not on caps. All right. What, what's your word, Brent? It's hello. Didn't. You. No. Uh. Why. The. B. Or me. What the it? the T H E. Okay. Insulin. (laughs) Couldn't. Brent's gotten two words (laughs) within two turns. Cross. (laughs) (laughs) The (laughs) road. That's a question mark. Thank you very much. Oh, wait. Is that a double that? Di- didn't you know why the insulin? No, it's not the one I got. Okay. All right. So currently what we have so far. Oh, didn't you know why the insulin couldn't cross the road? <laughs> Whose turn is it? It's Daniel's turn? It's Daniel's turn. Now. I. That is not your turn, kid. Crap. <laughs> now, if. I tell you period (laughs) (laughs) I don't like that but okay you (laughs) no I tell you you. never (laughs) how are we gonna bring this back to leave a message (laughs) Um, have ability to cross-reference. I was trying to get you back to, uh, um, record a message, but that works. Oh no! Libraries. Nope! 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 We can't do it. We can't do it. Nope. I can't do it. No! It's no! Hyphened. No! <laughs> it's hyphened. Cross-reference library. Libraries. Oh. Okay. Of. How. Diabetics. Oh come on! <laughs> Let's bring this home, people. <laughs> Record. Brent. What? Oh, uh, <laughs> there. Blood. Oh, <laughs> Daniel, please. <laughs> Sugar. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> Four. Uh, messages. I think that's it. Okay. Recorded. <laughs> Okay. Does that make what? Okay. 
Uh, oh, didn't you know why the insulin couldn't cross the road? Now, if I tell you, you will never have ability to cross-reference libraries of how diabetics record their blood sugar for messages recorded. Please leave your message at the beat. <laughs> I feel like Daniel and I are on like the same same wavelength there, and then Britt just came in and obstructed every. No, <laughs> no, there was no wavelength. It was this, this was not a sine wave or cosine wave. This was no feasible was noise. We were sine Dan? wave. You were arc cosine. <laughs> okay, so so Daniel, record it real quick. <clears throat> And then do I say leave, leave a message no. at the end? Okay. You, I tried to help you. I tried to – I was trying to help you get that in there, but it did not make it in, so. <clears throat> oh, didn't you know why the insulin couldn't cross the road? Now, if I tell you, you will never have the ability to cross-reference libraries of how diabetics record their blood sugar for messages recorded. There you go. All right, so let me and play so, that back. And so, if you ever have the ability Wait, to... Wait, hold on, he's uh, playing it back. Oh. Maybe. Oh, didn't you know why the insulin couldn't cross the road? Now, if I tell you, you will never have the ability to cross-reference libraries of how diabetics record their blood sugar for messages recorded. <laughs> All right, so, so now, if you know Daniel's phone number, call him and confirm yeah. that... That is indeed his uh, number. We're not going to do it now because we're out of time. And that brings us to demanding you guys to uh, become a little more active on social media because uh, we've been missing you guys and there's no action anywhere. So uh, do that like, do that commenting, do that following, and all the other shenaniganery. Uh, any final thoughts, boys? Shout out to mom. Will Smith come to the podcast. And I'm going to make one of those outlandish claims that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it could be considered a promise. We're going to have a guest coming up in the season uh, this season. <laughs> it's very vague, but yes. <laughs> Time-wise, that was very vague. And, and a yep. Christmas special. And a Christmas special. I don't know. I don't know if the season will make it. Well, uh, with ours, yeah, probably. You can probably expect this season's Christmas special, episode 13, to be at Christmas time. Christmas in, um, uh, what's July. like, 10 weeks from now? Christmas in 10 weeks from now. It's my That'd favorite. be April, Christmas in April. Mm -hmm. well, have so. we done an Easter episode? No, because we've never been recording <laughs> around Easter. Wow. Huge. Well, uh, final, uh, I have a final thought. You guys aren't going to like it. <laughs> well, because I saved, I saved my voicemail, and then I went and saved it as default to see if it would save the custom message, and it didn't. <laughs> so it's lost. Well, so, you know how to Easy fix. It. I, I, could, I could re-record it. But so I, I, I started sweating. I thought you were going to say that you were recording this episode. entire time. Yeah, I was so <laughs> freaking out. Yeah, I, I just haven't been recording my audio. <laughs> this episode will be – try and guess what Daniel was saying when Fred Ward was speaking. I, honestly, I would totally just release the episode as is and be like, just imagine Daniel saying something stupid. And <laughs> there you go. That's the episode. Imagine Daniel getting every answer right in the movie trivia, and you'll be pretty close to what actually happened. Uh -huh. I I give that movie trivia a six point three out of ten. Just because you didn't get perfect score, uh, no, that mean it's, read, it's entirely in, based in on ten... quality of questions. Uh, oh, Daniel, what they, would you rank it? What would you? I, I thought they were pretty good questions. It's at least like an eight out of ten. Hot dang! See, See that one. Bread... Is... Brent just but one point seven erases information from movies from his head. Yeah, that that's he, bad information. <laughs> he chooses to just neglect information. Well, uh, a sad, sad week for Brent losing or uh, not getting I a perfect, won. not getting a perfect score. I like won. he wanted. Uh, and he lost the ability to call the Terminator and his favorite two series. Of, I think so. Like two of the three, or I don't know if I missed three or four but two at least two of them 
I knew the alt. I was like debating between the correct answers. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Well, even though Brent's gonna be butthurt about that all week, I hope that you all have a bombastic week. Shout out. To See Brent's you mom. next time. <laughs>